All right, here's a short video on how to stay up to date on the medical literature, everything you need to know in five minutes. Uh, first up, push, don't pull, okay? So if your goal is, oh, I'm just going to go out and read every medical journal every month and I'll open it up. No, you won't, okay? So what's more efficient is have updates pushed to you. So sign up for the table of contents for top journals in your area. For me as a general internist, that might include New England, JAMA, etc. Also identifying high yield newsletters and blogs. Again, getting that push to your inbox so you're not exerting energy. Uh, a great example, New England Journal of Medicine Journal Watch. It covers multiple different journals. I quite like it. Um, trial Files, this is a free newsletter, uses AI to provide brief summaries for RCTs related to general medicine. And there's also subspecialty trial files like cardiology trial files, diabetes trial files. Um, a new blog um, comes out once a month, written by yours truly and Katarina Zorichich, uh, covers sort of headlining trials as well as maybe hidden gems you might have missed. Uh, next up, you know, your solutions have to be things that require minimal exertion. So tuning into podcasts, I think that's a great way to stay up to date because all you have to do is listen. So doing it while you're commuting or doing it while you're doing chores or whatever. Um, YouTube videos are also minimal exertion, but I find it's less common to have YouTube videos which are updating to people uh, related to, you know, a practice change in trials. So a few examples of podcasts here, uh, Intern at Work, excellent resource for medical students and residents, uh, NEFJC, their website and podcast is Wicked for All Things Nephrology, and I co-host the rounds table with my brother, John Fralick. Um, I think you also want to think, um, you know, how often should I expect to be getting any of these updates? And I think once a month is the most sustainable. I think more frequent than that, it can feel overwhelming and you'll just delete it. An exception, I think, is table of contents. You know, getting that once a week in my inbox, uh, that's easy for me to review. If something is of relevance, I click the link. If it isn't, a quick delete. Um, evidence alerts from McMaster. Uh, this is helpful. I find it's a little bit, maybe too much information, but you can tailor it to your specialty. And then I recently came across the medical letter. Um, these are updates related to medications. Uh, it seems like a pretty good resource. Uh, following experts on social media and use, you know, whatever social media channels you use, it sort of ticks the boxes of push, not pull. You're just looking at your screen and maybe you're getting relevant information and minimal exertion. Um, if you're a general internist or a medical student, uh, Brown Hospital Medicine is a really uh, great resource to follow. Um, I'm a member of Medicine Pods. It's a website that brings together many different resources and podcasts um, and information from different medical experts. You can take a look at that and it's completely free. And I would say like ditch major conferences. Uh, the idea like, oh, I'm going to go to this conference so I can stay up to date. I don't think so. You know, nowadays, even the major articles that come out from uh, a conference, they are timed to be published in a big journal if they're a really big study. So I just find going to conferences, is, that's not an efficient way to stay up to date on the medical literature. So to summarize here, the six general rules to follow, um, push, don't pull, you know, have things that they're getting pushed to your inbox so that you're not exerting energy trying to find things. Uh, as I mentioned, exert minimal energy. Uh, it's just more likely to be sustainable. Uh, monthly updates, I think, is a sustainable cadence. Uh, updates more often than that, I find I just don't have time. Uh, following experts in your field on social media, I think that's a nice way to stay up to date on the uh, literature. A ditch attending major conferences. Uh, and yeah, number six, you know, except it's impossible to stay up to date on the literature. Uh, I can't do it. I don't think anyone can do it. Um, every single day, there are 70 randomized trials that are published. So I just don't think it's possible to stay up to date. Uh, acknowledgements um, to uh, individuals that have um, uh, helped or, or led uh, some of the initiatives I mentioned here. Uh, in the comments, tell me, what did I miss? What do you use? That's a great resource. Uh, and that's it. And hey, we made it under five minutes. So bonus points.